It's ironic. When you think of the Romulans, you think underhanded tactics, staying in the shadows, torture, and manipulation. Intriguingly, we've never really seen them acting that way. Not up to now, at least. Oh sure, they've been described as attempting to manipulate governments, playing a chess game, move, counter-move, all that. But actual spying? Actual sabotage. Not really something I would describe them as in most of the episodes leading up to now, even in Enterprise. That would all begin to change. Let's take a look at the era of Romulan espionage. The episode we will be looking at include TNG's Day to Day, The Drumhead, The Mind's Eye, and Redemption Parts 1 and 2. Ironically, these episodes have Romulans as the central antagonists, and yet some have very little content about them. You even rarely see the Romulans in some of it, it's just this nebulous threat. Additionally, most of the episodes all relate to the impact of the Romulan Star Empire on the Klingons. It's really fascinating because in my latest Dominion War series video, I discussed how corruptible the Klingon Empire was and the successes of the Dominion Infiltrators. This is all coincidence, I assure you. Though, the Romulans would not be as successful in this era. In Data's day, a Vulcan diplomat must travel with the Enterprise-D and meet aboard a Romulan warbird to begin negotiations of peace. It appears, initially, that there is a transporter accident only for the crew of the Enterprise to realize that it was no accident, but the Romulans had actually kidnapped the diplomat. The Enterprise would return and ultimately Picard would stare down two Romulan warbirds and tell the Romulan Admiral he would not be leaving unless they returned the Federation citizen. I spoke about this in the past, but this is what Starfleet should be. Picard, the crew of the Enterprise-D, were staring down two warbirds and they knew that three more were on the way. This was not going to be a battle that was likely to be a Federation victory. But Picard wasn't leaving, because you don't kidnap Federation citizens without consequence. Now if only there hadn't been families aboard the Enterprise-D, but that's a conversation for a different time. During the standoff, it would be revealed that the Vulcan diplomat had been a spy all along, and with a 5 to 1 spread, the Enterprise-D retreated. We don't know enough to really determine how a Romulan would be able to become a very well-to-do ambassador though this would have had to been some deep cover. It also raises questions because while we know they are of a similar species, there are obvious genetic differences between a Romulan and a Vulcan's physiology. Additionally, I imagine the lack of any response from Starfleet against the Romulans after this, that we are aware of at least, makes the Federation look even more weak. In the mind's eye, the crimes are much, much more egregious. Commander LaForge, a Starfleet officer, is captured, tortured, and brainwashed. He is made to kill holographic representations of his friends. Which, if I can pause for just a moment. A few episodes ago, with the Romulan Admiral Defector, holodeck technology amazed him. And now, only a few months later, Romulans have the same tech? I mean, the Tal Shiar is effective, but wow. LaForge is turned into a Romulan spy and sent back to the Enterprise, which was investigating Federation involvement in aiding and abetting rebels against the Klingon Empire. It's a long story, and a full analysis of that episode is outside the scope of this breakdown, so you should take a look at it if you're interested. Ultimately, the Enterprise crew, Data specifically, discover Geordi is compromised and stop him from an assassination attempt on a high-ranking Klingon official. It is discovered that another Klingon is working with the Romulans to frame the Federation and halt the Alliance. And just like they would most assuredly put a task force to protect Deep Space Nine during the Klingon Federation War, the Federation takes a strong stance against this clear act of war against the Romulans. It's worth noting that the Star Empire was beginning to have some major impacts on the Federation, and even Starfleet. Both the Federation and Starfleet were becoming more and more suspicious of everything and everyone. And the Romulans didn't stop there. The Star Empire's tendrils were beginning to run deep into the Klingon Empire and its bureaucracy. This can be seen in the events of the Drumhead. I actually have a six-part series breaking down the Drumhead, so I will refer you to the links below to get a breakdown of that. Needless to say, it was very apparent to Starfleet that the Klingons were slowly succumbing to the machinations of the Romulan Star Empire. It was obvious that the Federation Klingon Alliance would one day falter if things continued. After some thought, I think I'm going to do a complete episode breakdown of both Redemption Part 1 and Part 2. It is the culmination of everything that the TNG-era Romulans have been leading up to. 
and it will be integral to the future relations between the Romulans and the Federation and the Romulans and the Klingons. We'll do that one next time. I'll see you then. Remember guys, in the end, if there's something you want to do, just do it. Take the jump. Because that's all everything ever is. A leap of faith. <laughs>